Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to see you. And uh, there is a African American uh, a song, an anthem I sang so long ago that said, let there be joy in this place. And I just give thanks that you have brought some joy with all of you. It's so good to be in this place. As we begin our service today, uh, for a while, I will, uh, recognizing that we have uh, uh, more and more and uh, people who have not yet heard our protocols, so I wanted to remind you of our protocols for worshiping and hope uh, together, and hopefully it won't be too much longer, too many more weeks, or hopefully not months, but uh, in the meantime, as we worship together, I want to remind you to remain seated during the service. We do have an offering basket and the small table. Oh, I see Brian going there. He's holding, he looks like the Easter Bunny back there. Uh, so he, there is an offering basket in the back and you can place your offering as you come in or as you go out. You're welcome to do that. And that is to uh, prevent us from uh, moving the offering plates with many, many hands. Just one less uh, ha handling. Also, uh, we're going to avoid robust singing for a while, but we have joy in our hearts, and so we, I invite you, you, you may hum the hymns softly, or if you have so much joy you cannot contain your humming, you may sing softly. And uh, I rem when the comes the day we, we can all take our ma masks off, we'll have to find the most robust, wonderful, sing out loud songs together just to get it, get our, get it back in our system. At the end of the service today, Marilyn and I will be excusing you in rows, starting from the back, so that we can observe a socially distanced exiting. So if you're in the front, please remain seated until we excuse you. And um, a food announcement. This, uh, we had a f extra apples left over from the food bank this week. And uh, they, we have tried to give them and have given them out to everybody in the world we can think of, and they're still multiplying apples. So there are some left at the back door, if, or the, the door as you exit, and you're welcome to take a bag with you. So once again, I welcome you to worship this morning, both uh, those of, of you who are in this worship space, uh, together, and I also want to acknowledge all of our friends who are with us online this morning. And I give thanks that we have a God whose presence transcends space and time. In Christ, we are one together today. Thanks be to God. And I recognize it is Mother's Day today, and we, I want to thank Sue for uh, brightening our day and sharing her love with us by providing these beautiful flowers as you came in. So thank you. It just feels so good to have some freshness, whether it's fresh music or fresh new flowers after this year being cooped up. Also, this week we celebrated Nurses Appreciation Day, and I especially want to acknowledge the nurses in our congregation, and we have quite a few, and you are our superheroes this week, and we do thank you so much for your service and um, for sharing your love in the ways that you do as we celebrate today uh, when Jesus says love one another. So I want to also acknowledge with the hands, let's just thank our nurses here and with us online. Thank you so much for sharing. So I want to ask you, when you think about it, what is the greatest act of love you can possibly offer? Is it your time? Is it your money? Is it perhaps cooking a meal and delivering food? 
comfort food to someone who needs it? Is it organ donation? But when you receive it, what does it feel like? What does it look like? This morning, Jesus teaches us all about the greatest expressions of love. And now Sue is going to help us to center ourselves for worship with the gift of music. Now will you all please join me for the call to worship. The Spirit is coming to bless us all with a new song. Let our joy be complete. Gifts for the good of all, poured out to all to teach us a new song. Love one another. Strangers and neighbors, foreigners and family will join in the new song. No longer servants, but friends. Come, let our worship make be, filled joy, be joy filled. Rejoicing in the friendship of God. Good morning. It's nice to be doing a little children's message. Not quite 100% normal, but a little bit better than sitting in my living room trying to video myself. So, but we'll get to the point where we can sit down here with the, the kids again at some point. And uh, certainly I think we're all looking forward to that. So I've got a question for you. How did Earth get its name? Well, the answer is, we really don't know. The name Earth comes from both English and German words. Ertha and Erde, respectively, which means ground. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. But the actual origin of Earth is truly unknown, the name Earth. One interesting fact about the name of our Earth. Earth is the only planet that was not named after a Greek or Roman god or goddess. All the other ones are. Now, except for Earth, Venus and Saturn are the only planets that are actually mentioned somewhere in the Bible. And in, in the Old Testament, it was called, Venus was called the morning star. Or excuse me, Saturn. Saturn was uh, the only planet that was mentioned in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, Venus was called the morning star. And Jesus specifically referred to it. 
Saturn is believed in the Old Testament to actually be um, refer referred to during the Israelites' journey through the desert after escaping from Pharaoh in Egypt. So Venus and Saturn. Now we sometimes refer to Earth as Mother Earth, which is where I actually got my inspiration for today, this being Mother's Day and everything, thinking about Mother Earth. Because Earth is the only planet where life can exist that we know of, and mothers are responsible for what? For bringing life into the world. Now as a home place where you were born, where you grow, where you eat and play, Earth is the one mother of all living things, and that gives you everything that you need to live. Now, how did, how did the idea of Mother Nature begin? Mother Nature is traced to ancient Greek mythology, and these are some statues uh, that were unearthed over many, many years. And it was the goddess Gaia, and the goddess Gaia created everything. Now, the origin of the name Gaia for the goddess is geo, which means earth. Makes sense. Now, what does the Bible say about taking care of our earth? In the book of Numbers, it says you shall, not, you shall not pollute the land in which you live. Psalm 19, the heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man, and that's us to take care of. Psalm 89, the heavens are yours, the earth also is yours, the world and all that is in it. It was given to us as a gift, and we need to take care of that gift. And finally, in Genesis, we're called to be good stewards of the earth and not to waste, but to care for the environment. Be stewards to God's creation. So just like we take care of our moms and we celebrate our moms on Mother's Day, we need to remember we need to take care of our Mother Earth and celebrate the gift that God has given to us in Mother Earth. So on Mother's Day, let's remember that. And let's have a prayer. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, this earth is ours to care for, but we haven't always been very good at it. We pray for strength and wisdom to take care of this gift that we have been given and to nurture it and to care for it and remember that it is the only earth that we have. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Thanks. Today is Mother's Day, and Mother's Day is often experienced with mixed emotions. So whatever feelings that you have brought with you today, we honor you with this video prayer. who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with the little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, 
we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, if that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. And we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and happy Mother's Day. And thank you to Sue. I agree with everybody else that it's so nice of her to every single year bring flowers and carnations for us to enjoy Mother's Day. My special Mother's Day gift is that my granddaughter, Riley, came down from, ba from Bailey to uh, come to services this morning. So that's a special gift for me. So welcome, Riley. <laughs> We have several prayer concerns that I want to share with you this morning. Um, I will uh, try to think of all of them and tell you. Uh, Rose Davis has been in the hospital and she's home again after kind of a tough two weeks. She's had several instances of being in the hospital and coming back home. So we hope that she is improving now. Uh, George Barrett is in a rehab center over uh, on the other side of town by Anschutz. He, um, he has shingles and his family is thinking that they will try to move him to assisted living after he gets back on this side of town. Phil and Laura Lawler's friend Jay uh, has passed away now after a long battle with cancer. And Helen Murphy, our dear friend, passed away this past week. And we are going to have a memorial service for her here at the church on Monday the 24th at 10 o'clock. And I learned after we already ag agreed that we would have it that there is also a vaccination clinic that day uh, this, for the second vaccination for many people but hopefully we can be out of here by the time they need to set up for that. And we'll ask people who come to her memorial service to please park on the south side of the church over there by the fellowship hall doors. So if you plan to come, uh, please park over there. And also I want to ask for prayers for my friend Carolyn Ming, who does not go to this church, but uh, many of you know her. Um, their family had planned to go to Glenwood Springs to celebrate Mother's Day. Instead, she called me yesterday and said, I know you think I'm in Glenwood Springs, but I'm actually in the emergency room. My husband had a stroke. So uh, we want to hold that family in our prayers also. And I know many of you have people that you want to pray for in your family and and of your neighborhood and of our nation even, of the things going on in our nation that need our special prayers. So let us first have a time of silent prayer and then we'll pray together.
O oh God, our creator, the one who gives us love and life and laughter, the one who cares about us and concern, gives concern for us and offers to us the special gifts of his grace, of his mercy. We thank you, God, for all the blessings that we receive. We thank you for mothers and for our memories of mothers and those mothers that are struggling with difficult issues. We pray that you will be with all of them, those who need their, your special care and guidance and forgiveness. We thank you, God, that we can gather together on this day and share our memories and share our concerns and share our prayers. And we thank you for all the blessings and for the beauty of this world. Now, every morning we receive your mercy, O oh God. Your faithfulness is as boundless as the heavens. We gather to worship you, thankful for all of your gifts. We thank you that Jesus is dying, his rising for us. He has overcome the power of sin and death. Help us to accept the freedom that Christ offers us through your presence among us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Feel it. 
We are so blessed to have the musicians, uh, our choir, our, our um, instrumentalists, and the technology to make beautiful music in this congregation. And if you weren't aware of it, uh, our hymns uh, today and all year long have been created by our own choir. So um, it is just a joy to be able to, um, to be blessed with our, our music in, in these ways. As we come to the time of blessing our offering, we remember once again that, that we are called to expand our witness as the people of God. And I want to celebrate one of the many, many ways that Phillips United Methodist Church, you as a church, expand your witness with all the resources that you have. Last month, I was contacted by the Lakewood Health Department, and they identified Phillips United Methodist Church as an ideal place for a vaccination clinic. They expressed that because of the fine, intentional work that we have done over the years to connect with our neighborhood, we are a place of accessibility and trust and so they asked if they could, uh, they could come and provide this vaccination clinic. And even some of our own members had the opportunity to take advantage of this. So uh, this is what you, uh, was happening last month. And the, one of the special things about this vaccination clinic is that it was available after most people, especially essential workers, get off of work. So that was really neat. So last month, about 350 of our neighbors here and in the Lakewood area were vaccinated. And on May 24th in the afternoon and early evening, round two of those vaccinations will be offered. Thanks be to God. Now you all please join me in the offering prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and all of us gathered here that we may abide in your love and that your love may abide in these gifts. In your loving name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the first of John 5, 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ that has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commands. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the ones who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. We 
We have two scriptures this morning, both by uh, a writer named John, but not the same John. The second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, starting 9 through 17. This is a part of a large section at the end of the Gospel of John where Jesus prepares to leave his disciples for an extended time. And we know about how it feels to leave one another for an extended time. And so when you prepare to leave, the things you do are especially important. We see during this section of scripture just before the crucifixion that Jesus prays for his disciples. He reminds them that he is the good shepherd and will care for them in their departing. And that also, they, if they're going to thrive, they need to stick close together like a grapevine and grape branches. And now Jesus continues that image of abiding and staying close together and adds on another important teaching. Jesus says, as the Father loved me, I too have loved you. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you my friends. Because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and produce fruit so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the father in my name, the father will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love one another. This is the word of God for God's people. I'd like to ask you, uh, for those of you who've got good memories from the 70s, have any of you ever heard of the group called the Five Man Electrical Band? By a show of hands, anybody ever? I thought maybe you would, and I knew you guys would. Who else? You remember? Okay, anybody else? All right, I honestly don't remember them, but I do remember well their hit songs called Signs. And the chorus went like this. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign, blocking out the scenery, break in my mind, don't do this, do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? Well, I appreciated last week when Ke Shelley Bowles stood right up here and she described our pandemic year as the year that we were told, you can do this, but you can't do that. And I thought, boy, that sure sounds like the year of signs messing up my mind. You have to stand six feet apart. Don't hug people. Wash your hands. Don't touch this. Wear your mask. And for heaven's sake, don't breathe on anybody. Don't go out. Don't go to school. Don't go to the grocery store. Don't sing. Don't visit the grandchildren. Stay away from older, vulnerable people. Signs, signs, everywhere a sign. And no one likes to be told what to do, do they? Do you? And let alone be commanded. And yet, 
Listen to the scripture today. This is my commandment that you love one another in the way that I loved you. Can we actually be commanded to love? Well, apparently Jesus did it, and Jesus continues to do that today. It wasn't a one-time thing just for the disciples a long time ago, and not for us. This is an ongoing, new, every morning command. And it's fairly simple, even though it's hard to do. Love. Love one another. Love means love. One another is one another, all means all. And this isn't even just the love your enemies kind of thing. This is love one another. Love those around you, those who are close to you, those who really need you, those in your care. Love one another. A while ago, I had a long afternoon's drive, and I was listening to a radio station, a Christian radio station, when I heard an interview by a pastor about a transformational moment in the church he served, and I found myself riveted to the radio story. The pastor was a pastor of a small Hispanic church in an inner city, and he said that he decided he was going to keep his message very, very simple. He said he did that because he didn't perceive the church as a particularly loving church. And over time, he actually confessed he got super frustrated with them. He said he got quite illusioned, disillusioned that they would ever meet their God-given potential. So one Sunday morning, he admitted to himself that he wasn't in a particularly good mood. He did not want to be there. And he had convinced himself and got himself kind of worked up that this congregation would never turn the corner to be a loving congregation. So he admitted that when it came time for him to share the morning message, he was pouting by that time. He stepped up to the pulpit and he simply announced, love one another. And then he sat down. Well, the congregation looked up in surprise and he said, I just looked at the people and they looked at me and then I looked at the people and they looked back at me. The organist didn't really know whether to start the next hymn or is it time to take up an offering? Was this a joke? Is there a punchline somewhere? Or really was this the shortest message in all of history? Sensing their confusion, something he started, the pastor stood up again, approached the microphone and simply said, love one another. And then he sat down again in a bit of a cloud. And then, to the pastor's surprise, a man stood up in the middle of the pews, and he addressed the people around him, and he said, Friends, I think I understand what our pastor is saying. These are not just words from the Bible. It's not just information. Our pastor is telling us, to actually love one another right now. As he told the story, the pastor admitted, well, that's not exactly what was happening on my end because I was in a bad mood. But you know, God took that moment right out from under me. And Joyce, I, I want to add, the, uh, add a side comment that in the scripture, the Bible says, God uh, God loves the cheerful giver. And after hearing this story, I think that God will take the grumpy ones too. Just saying. So the man continues. 
Here's what I suggest to us. Everyone, let's turn around to each other and, and form some small groups. So like in this section, if you all come together in a small group, and maybe some in the back, you could come forward, and those in the front, you could move to the middle and to the side. And, and for those of you in the back with some chairs, pull those chairs around you. If you don't know each other, introduce one another. And then in our small groups, let's just ask, how may we love you today? What do you need? And then people began to share the things of their heart. Some shared that they had come to church that morning praying for some kind of a miracle. Someone was short on rent. Someone else's car had broken down. Someone was concerned with a new uh, diagnosis from the hospital. And someone was praying for a sick friend Many concerns were shared with one another that day as the people talked and they really listened to one another. They prayed for one another. And then at one point, someone just called out. Does anyone know how to work on cars? This lady ha needs someone to help. And then from across the room, someone said, oh, I know how to do that. I can help with that. Well, someone else called out, this father of two is $200 behind on the rent and is very afraid of being evicted. They took an offering. The prayers and the request continued until everyone was loved that day. The Holy Spirit energy from those shared connections was so powerful that it actually empowered and transformed that small congregation. It helped them to learn how to care for each other. And then because it felt so good and they had some good practice, it led to sharing love in outreach beyond their community, their church. Well, the word got out in the neighborhood that there was a new spirit in that church. More people wanted to experience that kind of love. And so people started to come. And love revived the church. It grew because of loving one another. Jesus tells us that the greatest love a person can have is to lay down one's life for another. And we call that sacrificial giving, sacrificial loving. Now, sacrificial love doesn't always mean that you physically die for someone, although we certainly can tell beautiful stories of so how someone has done that. But in general, it means dying to yourself. It means setting yourself aside in favor of someone else's needs. So this kind of sacrifice is often daily. It can be a moment by moment experience. And in that we set ourselves aside in order to be of service to somebody else. Now whether those others is someone in our household or in our community, in our church, maybe that it is someone around the world, or as Kevin reminded us, it can be our Mother Earth. And through this, we learn to give ourselves away, Someone tur sometimes turning away from something that we really want, or we want now on our timeline, in order to give to somebody else. And I say that we learn to do this because loving like this doesn't always come naturally. I kind of wonder, you know, I can look at some people and say, oh, that seems such a natural thing, and they would tell you, no, it, took, it takes a lot of practice to do that. And this is the countercultural message of the gospel. It's countercultural because we live in a society that values ourselves above other people. It values individual rights over communal responsibilities or even our duties. And maybe that is why it's so very hard for some to understand our pandemic practices over this past year. We endure our inconveniences of distancing 
and wearing these darn masks and offering extra care for a little while longer in order to do no harm. That's our witness. We do care about safety. We don't want to risk being asymptomatic and exposing a virus unintentionally to a vulnerable person. And we do it for our families. We do it for our friends. This is the way we love one another. Setting oneself aside for someone. There is no greater love than that. Loving is what we do as Christians. There's a, a story in the Bible about the new church and how they loved one another and how people who didn't really know church at that time started to say, do you see those Christians? Look at the way they love one another. Loving, we love in a way that lays down our lives for those we love. Loving is a response to the love we have received from others. And maybe it's from our mothers as we celebrate Mother's Day, or our fathers. Maybe that beautiful love is one we experience from our spouses or lovers, from brothers and sisters in blood and in Jesus Christ. But even if we have received love from none of these relationships, I want you to be reminded to know deep in your being that you have been loved by God in a definitive sacrificial act of loving. And that means that all the loving that we are able to do is in response. We've already been loved by God. And so what we do is we respond in love. Now there's another secret that I want to share with you about this kind of loving. And that is, the more you love, the more we are able to love. That comes from that practicing. The more that we surrender to others, the more we really want to surrender. And that is another dimension of this greatest of love. It's the greatest because it grows like flowers that we enjoy this morning. It grows within us. It grows between us. Love begets love. And Easter people, this is what resurrection living is all about. Will you pray with me? Lord, we are gathered today as one body, because you chose to call us your friends. And we come here today from all walks of life. We've had our share of really good days and, and bad days. And in the world's eye, maybe we're not good enough or worthy enough to have this bond. But in your sight, we are exactly who you need. Despite all the drama, we have made it here to worship and to praise your name for who you are. And may the love we experience today in worship restore us. May it revive us. May it refresh us. God, use our broken selves as tools of hope and love on this day. Lord, we love you as you love us. Thank you for loving us and calling us your friends. It is in your name we pray today. Amen. Do not care.
And now, people of God, may God be gracious and bless us. May God's face shine upon us. May God's light lead us and grant us blessed peace. Amen. And I want to remind you that uh, as uh, Sue plays our ending music, that uh, Marilyn and I will be greeting you uh, starting at the back and working our way to the front. <laughs>